everyone. Hello, herzlich willkommen. Good to see you and uh, welcome to Mint and Berry's panel talk uh, on how to make the internet a kind of place with these superwomen. Yes, please have a seat, get comfortable. And um, this is Nika, Liana and Jesse, who I'll introduce you to in, um, in just a minute a bit more. But uh, let me first start by uh, saying it's good to see you. And um, I think it's awesome that you're all here being interested in the topic of what we can do to make the internet uh, more of our uh, cozy, favorite, and yes, romantic place. Um, I think it's, it's not always the very big, huge, dramatic things that have changed, but um, rather the little ones that maybe have um, become a little less kind in the last uh, month. Are you okay, Jessie? Yes. Brauchst du was? Water, okay. Um, ich setze mich einfach mal, I'll have a seat um, and I'll be right there with you. Um, I'll give you a couple of uh, examples to just kind of show what I mean with uh, a changing atmosphere. So imagine you're at the airport, like you guys probably are quite a bit, and your flight has been delayed. Four hours again. So Facebook, Twitter, Insta, just basically give you the perfect outlet to just let go of that frustration, let go of the anger and just vent a little bit. Also ensuring you the immediate compassion from your friends. And uh, you know, I guess it's okay. And I think um, the best outcome for you possibly could be the airline at fault, even you know, getting none of this and giving you a gift voucher. So that's not really harmful, is it? I, I don't think so but um, it creates a little bit of a different atmosphere, or a different example. It's um, Sunday, like today, 8.15 in Germany, official Tatort time. Do you watch? Yes. Yes? <laughs> um, I do too, and somehow it's become a, a phenomenon that we don't only watch the show and maybe think, well, the plot has been smarter before. It used to be a little bit more intriguing, didn't it? And maybe we shouldn't only watch the television, but also go online and just watch Facebook and all the live comments and the sarcasm and um, all the things that you know people just say during a live show to comment on it and even start um, a little bit of hating, not even meaning it very mean. Somehow, hating and ranting on the internet has crept into our lives and become just a very normal outlet and creates uh, an atmosphere of negativity very often. How long is that okay? And where is the point where it starts to, you know, not be okay anymore? So it's okay to maybe bash a TV show a little bit, probably. But um, how about commenting on a more personal level? For example, you see somebody's uh, holiday picture and you think, well, this bathing suit is not ideal. And you post um, a funny comment, not really mean, just, you know, a little bit maybe, or rather funny. Is that still okay? And when does it stop to be okay? When is it a freedom of expression and when does it start to become hate speech? Um, and also, what do we do that, especially that, the hate speech, doesn't take up our time and doesn't kill our vibe, which is lovely and wonderful so many times online in our online communities where we get so much love and um, friends and just uh, beautiful feelings. So um, today I would love to discuss these questions uh, with these wonderful three ladies here and you guys, of course. And um, yeah, let me introduce you guys a little bit more. Jesse, we all know you. I think everybody does, but still, anyways. Um, you've been a blogger for, I think, 10 years this year, 10 year anniversary this yes. year. Kind of old now. <laughs> <laughs> Not really old, but 10 years, quite a time in that, in that business. I think you founded Journal, your blog is in uh, 2012 and um, write on it on a daily basis about fashion, about lifestyle. And um, I think more than 400,000 uh, readers follow your blogazine on a monthly basis. You have about 140,000 followers on Instagram. You're very active, just one of Germany's most successful bloggers. So it's good to have you. Maybe you guys have a little applause for Jesse. Oh, thank you. Herzlich <laughs> <Okay>. willkommen. <laughs> Liana. Um, I'll talk about you a little bit more because I think we, we probably know you um, not as well as the other two today out of this round. Um, you've been born in Romania. You moved to Berlin at the age of 14. Uh, am I right? <laughs> okay. I think you have a 20-year-old uh, son. You um, studied law for five years and you are a trained um, language correspondent. Um, 
I think also that uh, you have had um, not always the very easy past. I think your father was uh, persecuted. So um, from personal experience, the right of free speech is uh, a very important topic in your life. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, you um, come from a standpoint where you say um, just watching comments online um, d doesn't do it for you anymore. You, you really want to take part and take action. That's why you are part of the Facebook initiative Ich Bin Hier. And oh, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. But um, first, hi Liane, herzlich willkommen. Good to have hi. you. Nika, uh, together with your friend, you have the be most beautiful smile, kind of like, what's coming now? Thank you. <laughs> um, you found it, uh, this is Jane Wayne, your blog uh, with your friend Sarah Gottschalk, I think um, also quite seven years ago, about? Good question. Yes. Yes? 2010. 2010. So seven years in the game. It's going really well. Um, you also are a partner website of Vogue magazine. You write about everything that concerns you from from life, from fashion, from uh, feminism to even politics. Um, you, like Jesse, have your own clothing line. Uh, you just launched it, I think, at the beginning of the year with Kauf dich glücklich together. And your own podcast, uh, Jane Knows Wayne, which you just recently started. So, good to have you in the game. Thank Thanks you. for being here with us today. Nika, herzlich willkommen. So, we do want to find answers to the question, how can we make the internet a kind of place? And how do we inject a liberal romance in our online lives, but also just, just in our lives, really? Um, I would love to uh, kick it off with you, Liane. Tell us a little bit more about the Facebook initiative Ich Bin Hier and why you wanted to be a part of it. Um, ich Bin Hier is an initiative for, um, at Facebook Media and uh, we try to talk about hate speech. We are looking, we are screening media the whole day in Facebook and are looking about where we see more, uh, more than 50% hate speech and then we start actions and go in to have a friendly discussion not only um, to insult people or to hate people, to try to, to, to make it a better place, yeah? Because many media in Germany, like, you know, the Bild Zeitung or something like the Focus or something like that, they don't uh, moderate their pages. So everyone can put his own stuff in there and insult people um, against they are against everything, against homosexual people, against um, everyone. And so we try to, to take a balance and to tell them, well, you're not alone and you're not a minority, you're not a um, minority. The minority yeah? We are here and um, we are standing for, for something like respect and um, culture and not only hate. So you go in and you start a discussion with the haters. We try. Uh -huh. So we come. Uh, How we does that work? <laughs> and <laughs> it's um, it's not easy, but um, there are people who are only reading. Mm -hmm. They don't comment like themselves, and it's uh, very uh, important that they um, don't read the whole stuff only. They have to see that there are many opinions mm -hmm. and good opinions, and maybe that's the hope. Um, if someone is like, he is a real hater, mm -hmm. I don't think you can discuss with them. But it's, we try. So you're basically, what you're also doing, it's not only, you're not only talking to them, trying to change their opinion maybe, but you're saying, okay, I will not give you the space. Yeah. I will make sure that under this comment, there's a few posts, I don't know. That's the point, yeah. 20 negative, hateful things, I will post how many? Hundreds. Hundreds? Yeah. Okay. So you're not giving them the room, all right. Yeah. Okay. And it's like, um, if a good comment is on top, it's, it's very uh, important to put the haters, to get them down, to let them down, that if you open this article, the first maybe 10 comments are positive, and then the other stuff is coming, and the most people, 
doesn't read, they read only the, the, the first ones and then. Okay. Um, Jesse, and I think in a recent interview with uh, German Woke, you said uh, that the biggest haters on the internet have to fight a battle that is way bigger than the battle against you. It's the battle against themselves. What did you mean by that? Um, actually, I think that when um, I'm talking with my friends or um, yeah, talking about um, social media and negative comments on social media, I've never written a bad comment in my entire life. And I think all my friends never did that as well. So I'm assuming that they are in a good place, even if they don't have a good day or that everything's uh, romantic and beautiful all the time. They are in a better place and they don't have to um, do hate speeches on other websites. I always made the experience that people who are hating on me or that they don't like anything about me, in the end, it's something that they experience in their own life or that they couldn't have something or that they are not, not even jealous of, but it could be something that, you know, when you get up in the morning and something's not right and you don't know why exactly, that they have this feeling maybe all the time. So I think, um, yeah, that I made the experience that it's... Um, most of the time not about me, I don't have to take it personal, which always helped also a lot, um, that it's rather, uh, yeah, that they are fighting with themselves in a way. Do you always manage to not take it personal? Never. <laughs> well, in I, 10 years, good I to try. Hear that I'm not alone. I really try, I really try. And I know that after five minutes that I read something and I got into a bad mood and I'm like, why again, Jesse? In all those years, that's nothing you've learned, which is strange. Um, but in the first seconds, you're always like, ah, it's still there. It's, uh, it's still something, especially when, when words are, um, it's nothing like, I don't like your outfit or you look ugly. It's not that. It's most of the time comments where you know that that the person really sat there for a longer time and it's like a very long comment. So they really put some time in it and they try to, to um, make it sound very good. So it's, it's, it's well written most of the time. And that's what's really uh, makes me um, sad in the beginning. And then I'm like again, okay, I always try to visualize the people who are writing it. If I would see them in real life I think I would never be uh, in a talk with them. They would never become my friends. It would be actually probably never a person that I could be friends with. And that helps. And then I come down and I'm like, next day everything's better again. <laughs> so I have to um, keep in mind that I don't answer directly because that makes it super easy. I don't know how about you to be like a little bit like, mm, you're not right. So I have to some time and then I can answer or I just uh, ignore it. So that's something that uh, you do. You do step into the dialogue, but you try to not do it in the moment. Yeah, especially if, if people really ask questions, if they want to know something, then of course I answer. But most of the time people um, don't, they try to make constructive sta statements, or at least they think it's constructive, but most of the time there are never constructive. So in this, um, yeah, at that moment I'm not really answering them because I know, like you said, there won't be a dialogue. You can say whatever you like, they will take it and, you know, um, put it into another context. So... I also think that in real life they, they wouldn't talk like that. Yeah. That's the problem. In social media they are acting like, I don't know, if, if they are if you are face to face with them, I, I think they wouldn't talk like this. Liana, uh, Liana Nike. Um, you've been uh, one of the longest standing fashion influencers in Germany and you've been in touch with your followers for quite some time. Do you think that the feedback that they give you has evolved? Is it different? Um, it is different, but first, um, I think I have a bit of a mixed feeling about this whole topic. And it's not a hate speech against you, but I think I have just different feelings. Because I think you can have a dialogue with haters, and I think it's the most important thing. Because they just feel, they don't feel included, they, have, they feel hate, because of whatever. I don't know if they're just bored. It's not only jealousy. I think this is so easy to say that they want to have everything we have. I think that's not the only thing. Um, and I just, sometimes I feel that if you ignore them, it even gets worse. And I know that all the, like, 
there are so many people saying just ignore it, but I don't feel comfortable with that. I want to talk to them and be like, what's your problem? And please, can we just talk to each other? And that's, that's exactly what happened through, like, I think it's seven years now, and again and again there were people not liking what we do, not liking what we wear, and I really don't care if someone is confused about my shoes or whatever. Of course, it's just a super fishy stuff, but if someone is really, really like emotional about a thing, then of course I care about that. You know, and I sometimes I hear all the bloggers say it doesn't touch me, but of course it touches me because I'm a human being, and that's the thing. We are no robots, and I think some of the like some of the hate speakers or however you want to call them, they think we are robots, and they, and that's the problem because I think in real life, you the more you get to know a person, the better you like him or her. But I think in social media, it's probably sometimes a bit different. The more you see from exactly one person and the more selfies you get to know, the more fucked up you are. I sometimes feel the same. Sometimes I feel like, what are my colleagues doing? And then I take a look at my own feet and I'm like, what am I doing? And this is what we forget, that it's not only our opinion and the view we have on our social media feeds, but there are so many people looking at our feeds and probably not being inside of our brains, so they can't really know what we meant by that. And I think we have to also rethink what we're doing, and probably sometimes they are right. Sometimes it is strange what we're doing. I don't know. So have you been in dialogue? Is that what you've done when somebody, um, I don't know, is um, really, really hateful? Do, yeah, you, do totally. you talk to them? Quite every how time. That, how does that work? It works. At the beginning, you are totally right. It doesn't work. They just find more and more to hate about you. Okay. But then at the end, you feel at one time they just stop because they don't know what to say anymore. But sometimes they are like, okay, thank you so much for saying this, because now I'm starting to get it. I don't really have to like what you're doing or what you say, but it's cool that you answered. I didn't expect that or something. And so I think that's exactly what is happening with politics all over the world. It doesn't matter if it's in Europe or in the USA with Trump. I think all those people are just angry, and if you ignore them and don't talk to them, they keep on being shitty to other people and also to themselves. So you would advise uh, to try to have conversations even though p people do not change their standpoint? Or at what point do you say, okay, maybe this one's the last cause? I mean, I think we have to make clear that when we are talking, like Jesse and me, we are talking about hate speech that is really, it's fine. It's a really, you know, luxury, yeah, kind important. of a luxury yeah, problem. Yeah. And I think in it's that different. case, of course, you, you should, because you want to have a good, you know, mood with your readers and your followers, so yeah, just try. And if it really doesn't work, then block the people who really want to harm you or bully you. Mm -hmm. But it's a total different thing, um, I think, than the stuff you have to deal with, because um, I just, I have two little sisters. They are 18 and 16 now, or 15. Yeah, and uh, and when I talk to them, it's different because they are really like Instagram is so kind of huge for them, but they are not following like I don't know celebrities. They are following each other in school, and who's got the most followers is the cool kid or whatever, and they're hating. And it's really you have to I don't know. I think you have to educate them. And also my sister, she's super like she's a feminist as well and she wants to talk about the topic, but then she starts hating other girls too sometimes. And then I have to say, listen, Dude. do you really care what she's wearing? It doesn't matter. It's her choice. And yeah, you have to talk and talk and talk. Yeah, it's true, it's a dialogue that you're not only having with your friends and your families and that you try to have it online as well, but as you said, we don't really, of course, there are a couple of people who really uh, don't like what we are doing, but I think in all those years, you can always count them on one hand, 
or let's say two hands. So it's always the same people and you have to keep that in mind. So there are nine positive comments on the website. One is negative and what sticks to your head, it's the one that's negative. And this is a very big problem that we have to deal with as well and we have to change our minds about this. I think it's an evolutionary thing to be honest because whenever <laughs> something bad happens to you and before that everything was pretty and beautiful, you just stick to this one uh, thing that didn't really work out in that situation. Uh, and I think you have to rethink this whole mindset and then you have to talk about it and make sure that there is a lots of positivity and lots of romance in this world, but you just have to um, point at those things more and more and have to keep that in mind. Um, but I also sometimes think that that's exactly the problem because there are 40 nice comments and two negative comments. Of course, the negative comments are the ones who stick in mind. You're totally right, but probably, I mean, it's a loss of democracy. If everyone is just saying things are fine and nice and cool, what about the other opinions? Because it's not possible that everyone likes something. So, but I think we lost the point of really discussing things or giving constructive advices, not saying, wow, you look so cool, you look so amazing. What does that mean if 20 people post it under a picture? I would be rather like happy if someone says, I really like it, but what about trying red socks to that? Wouldn't that be great? Or something that is really like but an did ever advice. Say that? Sometimes. In my case, for example, nobody ever does that. And I would love that because yeah. positive comments for me, they don't do anything to me. They have the same effect as if somebody would have written nothing, to be honest, because uh, it's really, yeah. it's super nice. But in the end, it doesn't really, you know, uh, it's, it's not the real life that you were talking about. I mean, of course, I am, I'm super happy if I read something nice. It doesn't matter how superficial it is. Um, but. Really, I think it's just there is a lack of, it's not logical that there is just everything positive. And then I think that's why hate speech evolved that much. Because what, what can people do who don't have to say th something nice, but also something that isn't bullying? Because the moment they say, I don't really like it, there are like 10 people saying, oh, you hate her, blah, 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 blah. And they, they just don't know how to say it in a normal way because it's okay to discuss things and to not like something. It's okay, I definitely put down that uh, you need to be challenged, Nika. You, you want that too. <laughs> no. no, it's not. Not, not in a good way, you know? But um, I think um, you, you would like, what kind of interaction with your followers would you like? Yeah, I think, as I said before, um, the, the point is that I was always wondering where does it come from? Where does the hate come from? And because there is no outcome, there is no space for not liking things because it's all about liking, giving hearts and whatever. But it would be so great if someone would say, I don't know, something is missing in your outfit or whatever. And like now it's a super like, okay, if it comes to outfits, it's really not important. But even then, maybe they could challenge me and say, what about wearing high heels instead of sneakers all the time or whatever? Just try it because I think it would look nice. And this looks kind of mm, seen it a hundred times. I don't know. You know, you can say it in a nice way, but this is this is what I said before too, it's just, it's just fashion. But when the, the comments that hurt me are the ones who deal with what I'm writing and the things I tell which are really, really private. And yeah. this is something I'm like, whew, I don't know how to deal with it. But that's also these moments I just go inside the conversation and try to fix it somehow. Okay. Someone just, um, I don't know, it's like three months ago or whatever, mm -hmm. because I'm also writing those brain blasts about very personal stuff. Um, and it was a hard decision if I want to write about personal stuff or not. But then on the other hand, I was like, no, because no one is perfect at the internet and everyone is just saying life is beautiful, but sometimes it's not. So I just write it to make other people feel they're normal. <laughs> Can you explain a little bit of what, what you mean? Um, for example, um, my child is turning three now, but I'm not together with his father anymore. And when we broke up like half a year afterwards, I was writing an article about it. And what I'm not doing is like crying and being like, oh, everything is so bad, but just saying, 
this is the way it is now and shit happens, but it goes on. And that doesn't mean that I always feel, fi feel fine, mm -hmm. but it's okay. And I got so many, so, so many really kind messages also from people who discovered the same situation. But there were two or three people saying, oh my God, how can you write that? Just go and get a therapist. And I was like, do I? I mean, of course, everything who writes knows that it's kind of a therapy to write about it. And besides of that, I think everybody could, of course, go to a therapist. I. It's, it's nothing I'm, like... I'm like, I would be in. Yeah, I would be totally <laughs> happy to have one, actually. <laughs> we should all have one. I think we, we should, should all have it. one. So I decided, yeah. I, I unload. I just yeah. say, yeah, probably you're right. Probably I should go to a therapist, but writing about it also helps, and not only me, and that's the point. That's why I'm doing this. Otherwise, I could just quit my job and do whatever, because it's not only about wearing these kind of shoes or whatever. And it worked, because the person was like, okay, probably I didn't realize that you are helping others through that. So maybe that's, you know, part of an answer that we are looking for today is to make sure that um, the real questions or the real topics are talked about also. Yeah. And the real feelings are, you know, laid bare sometimes, and sometimes it helps you just putting them in writing and sometimes it even helps hundreds more to know that, you know, you struggle with it, even though you have a beautiful uh, Insta profile, you know, you have sh uh, shit at home happening too. So that could be part of an answer, huh? Jesse. Yeah, I think the more you open up, uh, not only to yourself, but also to your readers or just writing it down, of course, helps to um, get to know you much more. And uh, the more... I don't know the English word at the moment, Angriffsfläche. <laughs> Does anybody know Angriffsfläche in English? Ah, opening really side? Yeah. There is, the, the bigger the opening side is. Um, <laughs> that sounds strange, whatever, you know what I mean. Um, of course, um, there are much more positive comments, but also much more negative uh, comments and I think you have to deal with that and you have to keep in mind that um, if you do so that you uh, will get the feedback anyways um, and that's always what I'm struggling with how much personal life private life do you give and show um, and how much do you want to keep for yourself um, Liana um, I would like to ask if you've when did you start joining Ich bin hier? Uh, in February this in February. year yeah Okay, so do, do you think um, this is a, a, it's kind of a, almost a trend, the um, hate speech? Do you see it increasing or um, do you think yeah, it'll it always is, be there? Um, it's increasing because nearly now we have to, um, the, they have to vote the people and it's very political. We have the AfD and um, we have racism in Germany also. That's very sad, but um, you can read that every day. But uh, what, what you said, it's like, it's not that, it's no problem that people are talking about what they're th uh, thinking of. That's not the point. The point is how, how, how they are doing that, this. Um, you can tell your opinion, you can say what you're thinking and, and I think that's not the problem. The problem is, is how, how are you doing that? And um, if we read about um, articles with politics and stuff like that the whole day, um, it's not like they don't have arguments. It's not like um, they, they are bringing facts or something like that. It's only like they are trying to insult you to... to they are telling only shit, I think, the whole day, and there's nothing what what brings you further or or makes you make 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 a like nice discussion. You can be left, right, in the middle, or whatever you want, but try to to be um, kindful to people mm -hmm. and accept their opinions and their way of life, and then it's okay. I have a question because do you think it will ever go away? Because no, sometimes never, I feel never, like never because that's that's human, human being. It's yeah. like that. They are in 
um, they are like uh, I don't know. Before I went to, if ich bin here, I was alone in the whole wild web and read, um, uh, wrote comments at Spiegel or Zeit online or everywhere. And I had um, sometimes 300 likes and a shitstorm under my, my comment. And I, I felt alone the whole time. And then I stopped to write because I couldn't get with this hate. Um, I became sick of that. So I think, uh, I think Ich Bin Hier is, is very important that people need to know you're not alone. And those haters are not, um, they are not alo alone over there, so we are here. And also and to make it much more kinder in a yeah. way. But does it help? Do you kill them with kindness? Does it work? Sometimes it works, sometimes it, it doesn't work. It depends on, on the day, on the, uh, what the tema is, uh, what the topic is of, of, of some articles. Um, it's not easy, but um, I think it's, it's a good thing. Is it easier to stand up for someone else than for yourself? For yourself? I think so, yeah. Do you fight more fierce? Or is it easier because you're not hurt? If I get hurt, then, then I, I feel that I'm not alone. And I can... I, um, I get help from somebody and... I know that and that makes me strong. So he can... I commented in, in the morning today one comment and... Um, one hater they talks to me like, uh, he said, well, you're stupid. So I said, well, thank you, wish you a nice Sunday and hope uh, you, you're okay. And then he stopped because some of us came into that discussion and so then they stopped because they can't argue. They try only to, to I don't know, I don't know what they're trying. And what kind of um, positive experiences uh, do you guys have online? I'd like to um, know a couple of them of each of you. Well, as I said before, there are lots of positive ones and you try um, to keep them in mind. Um, and now that I had to think about this, I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> again, I just had some negative uh, things. But of course, there are so many positive things and on a daily basis and uh, we should not forget about that. And um, just recently, for example, um, I said that uh, it would be great if all the followers are going to the, um, to the elections on 24th of September, which is super helpful and got me lots of comments as well that they were like yeah perfect that you're supporting this it's great to have a voice that they were actually commenting which showed me uh, the kind of feedback um, I wasn't even expecting in, in that moment I was just like okay maybe it helps a couple of people but this was really really positive uh, and I think this happens on a very daily basis um, yeah and it's uh, not always uh, negative fortunately do you have any any positive outputs or any mm, anything that you you learned from rather um, hateful commentary that happened? Is there anything that or any experience that you can say it started with a negative thing and you I don't know took something from it? Of course, I yeah. think every day, as Jesse said, it's on a, a daily basis. You get positive comments, but also negative comments. And that's what kind of keeps me running, because sometimes, that's what I said before, they are right. If they say something like, oh, it's boring, it looks all the same, why are bloggers always wearing the same labels or whatever, then I'm like, man, you're right. You're just right, so let's rethink it and let's try to be different. And if, I, if all those comments didn't exist, nothing would ever change. We that's would just not be... That's hate speech, right? That's, that's... Yeah, sometimes that's, you know, I said it in a very you nice way now. said it in a romantic, way? Way. In a romantic okay. way. Kind of but translated of it into Mint and Berry. <laughs> yes, totally. Okay. I mean, and the thing is, I, I totally get why people tend to hate bloggers, because most of the bloggers, including me, they pretend to be just happy all the time. And they get free clothes every day. 
And it's so intransparent that you don't even know if I bought the jacket by myself or not. And even now that we're trying to be transparent, no one gets it, you know? They of course think I got this jacket from whatever or whomever. So what about the jacket? That's no, <laughs> that's just a, you know, that's just an example. But even if I, you know, they of course think that life and probably they don't deserve it because I'm working so hard for my income and I'm doing a really, really great job and the bloggers are just posting pictures of themselves. So I think we also need to show them that it's work. Also for the younger girls who think it's a dream job, of course it's a dream job, but it's a hard dream job. But that's not visible. But you so. always have to educate your readers as well to have it to, to comment in an okay way, I think. I think it's a very different thing if they don't like something and it's okay to, to say that because that's also what keeps me running because I like to know if people like what you're doing or if they're not liking it. But if they can't say why they don't like it or if they are just hating, this is a very big difference. It's not helpful at all. So whenever somebody's like, saying like, I don't like your shoes because they have, uh, they make duck feet, for example, example. This is okay to me, but do you have something, uh, what would you rather wear in this, uh, um, in this case? But nobody ever does that. And I think you can try to say, okay, let's talk and let's get into the conversation, but you need to give a bit more than just uh, your dislike in this situation. Of course, but um, I think I wasn't really talking about bad comments about my shoes because that happens, you know, less, like, I don't know if there are so many people liking my style. <laughs> I like it, but I don't know. It's I the think they example find it interesting, fashion. interesting, but not really pff, great. So that's a normal thing for me. But when it comes to really personal things, I mean, the comments I really, really appreciate and that are touching for me are the ones who are, um, who talk about my work itself. If someone is saying, I do get what you want to say through your blog, and I'm not only looking at one, like, one post and saying it's nice or not, but I get the whole thing, I know what you want to say, then I'm really like, oh, thank you, at least one of you <laughs> just got it. And so, yeah, and also that happens. For example, when we um, had this collaboration with Kauf dich glücklich, um, We had this, I mean, we designed it a year before it was dropped and so the whole like pop feminism topic wasn't that present, it wasn't an, at HMM and wherever. So, but then the moment it dropped, it was everywhere. And so people were saying like, boo, what's up? Like you're selling feminism for what? And, um, but what we really wanted to, we really wanted to empower people through wearing the clothes only by, not because it was called Bonjour Simone, it was an homage to Simone de Beauvoir. And we really wanted people to, you know, care about what she was doing or probably diving more into, like deeper into the topic and stuff and feel powerful while wearing the clothes because it weren't like skinny jeans and super sleek. It was like a bit of hang loose. And so we had this one um, young woman sending us a picture when she was wearing the red shoes that were part of the collection. And she said like, girls, thank you so much. The shoes and I, we have been so strong together. We were the best team today because we just went to our boss and asked for a higher paycheck. And it worked. And we were like, oh, she got it. Best and it's, thing so, ever. it's the best thing that can happen while wearing those red shoes. And that was really, really, really nice to hear after Spiegel Online and whatever Margarete Stokowski didn't really get that Kauf dich glücklich is just the name of the brand we collaborated with that was, I don't know, founded 10 years ago and it was meant like buy something that makes you happy and don't overconsume. Mm -hmm. But she, of course, only saw the capitalistic way mm -hmm. to, yeah, and so, um, It wasn't nice to read all this, but then again, the feedback from real people who w were wearing the collection, yeah. that was great. Made the difference. Made a difference, yes. Now that we're talking about real people, do you think if you are hating online, can you still be a beautiful person? What do you think? Jesse? That's super difficult, but um, I think I said in the beginning that I really know nobody who ever hated 
on social media or on blogs or anything. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think it's just a completely different uh, kind of person that, uh, or are, um, like different characters that I may have not met in my life so far. But um, I do some people, um, well, you can track comments, of course. So you have IP uh, um, addresses and you sometimes know who's writing the stuff. And then you can find out who wrote something sometimes, not all the time. So, of course, a couple of times I found out who the person was and I was kind of surprised. So in the end, um, it can always be somebody you never expected it of and you always had a very nice impression. And um, since whenever I found out who the person was, I was like, okay, strange, um, what was going on? And then most of the times, a couple years later maybe, I found out what the problem at that time was. So it's, it's not so easy to say that people can't really be uh, nice people and views change and, and you as a person uh, change and I think you grow up in a way. So um, that's a fine, fine line. And I'm not sure if we do really know I mean, I would always say I know nobody who does hate speech, but, you know, doesn't, like, everyone have two sides? And probably, like, it's the thing that I said before, if you don't ever have the chance to really say you don't like something in a, in a normal way because it's just not common in the internet, like in the blogger world, let's say it like that, um, probably you just collect your hate and your... <clears throat> and then at some point it just pops out. And then you're like, bitch or whatever. <laughs> Probably that happens. Also, yeah. Could be. I mean, we're just, that's the thing, we're human beings. Yeah. And as I said before, I'm not a hero or an angel. Sometimes I have to, like, I feel like I have to puke by, like, while looking at a picture, mm -hmm. one of my colleagues, but then it's like, whew. But did you ever write something? I think this is a very big difference. No, of, of course, course that's a big difference. Like. Of course, it's a big difference, and I, I try to keep calm, but yeah, I can't really say what I was, you know, thinking, <laughs> emotionally <laughs> involved of it. But, but yeah, I think it's, it's human and if, I don't know, and I think it's the thing that you, at that point, you wish for someone who just says it in a nice way because you can't believe that no one thinks this is crazy. Uh -huh. You just can't believe it and then you're like, do you really, like, does everybody like what is happening here? Yeah. That's not possible. And I'm a really, like, relaxed person. Mm -hmm. I always liked summer jam and stuff, so it's okay. But if you're not relaxed, probably it's just like, boom. Explosion. I can't, I can't bear it any longer because it's, pull. Okay. Well, I wish so much <laughs> uh, we could talk more and more about this because I think uh, it's clear that there's not, you know, this one right way to deal with hate comments, but unfortunately we do not have um, a lot more time. But to kind of try to wrap it up, um, I think um, one thing we are sure of that um, hate speech doesn't deserve too much room. Um, I think we uh, need to make sure that um, in our online lives as well as in our real lives, um, we make sure to fill it with lots of love as well, not discounting the opinions behind the hate speech. Um, it's Everybody has their own opinion, everybody should, and everybody should voice it, but hate speech simply as that is not acceptable. So um, let's maybe uh, be brave as uh, uh, Nika seems to be and uh, get in dialogue more often. I think that's something I'm taking with me because um, I tend to be so angry that I, um, I can't really dialogue in that moment. Maybe I, like Jesse, I it works. <laughs> I, I need a little more time and then do it. But um, also just um, know that, you know, ich bin hier exists, for example, but that just being um, one sign for we are not alone. We're in this together. We're many. And um, basically love conquers hate, always has, always will. And um, I hope we can, uh, for today, see that uh, our online lives have so many beautiful, positive aspects. We learn so much from it, we grow, we like to be challenged, um, and uh, hopefully we'll have uh, more Romans uh, moving on. So thank you guys for all your thoughts, your feelings, your input. Are you here a little longer so we can, you know, if anybody has questions?
Okay, so we'll be here. Thank you guys um, for being with us today, for being interested, for taking the time, and please come up and talk to us. Um, if you don't catch us, just follow us online and let you know, get in a dialogue. And um, I don't know, I hope uh, we'll have a little more romance and make the internet just a little bit of a kinder place. Thank you very much. Vielen Dank euch. Danke, Nico.